Hi, my name is Marian and I'm a customer engineer at Graphcore. I'm going to talk to you about our Pop Vision Graph Analyzer tool. Graphcore makes computer system for machine intelligence based around our intelligence processing unit or IPU. Depending on the model Mark 1 or Mark 2, you have up to 1472 individual parallel processing core and as much as 900 megabytes of on-chip memory. It has been designed with a radical new approach to memory organization. And it has been designed, co-designed with the software that leverage that new type of organization and takes care of the memory management so that the user can really focus on to the algorithm and on the optimization at an application level. The introduction of this new type of processing architecture required the development of a customized graph profiling tool. And this tool, which you will see in this video is very straightforward to use, will help you to make optimization decision, both for memory management and for execution time of your graph. And this can be used independently of the machine learning framework that you have selected for your application. So in the video, I'm going to give you an overview of PopVision, but more importantly, I'm going to show you how to very quickly start to analyze your own application. If you are completely new to the IPO architecture, I recommend that you go first onto your developer page under documentation and that you read the IPU programmer's guide. This will give you a high level introduction about the IPU architecture and the programming model. PopVision is available for download on, onto our Graphcore support portal. It's available for Mac, Linux and Windows, alongside with our popular SDK. So by the time this video comes out, um, Pop Vision version 2.1.0 should be out. And this is the one that I'm going to use for the video. So the tool uses information generated by our popular software, both during the compilation and the execution of the application. The information is saved in a set of report files that can be enabled by a simple environment variable. So you need to set up Poplar Engine option with the option autoreport.all to true. And you can also specify the directory where you want to save those reports. And the generation of those files is independent of the framework, whether you are using TensorFlow, PyTorch, Onyx, PopArt, or any of the other uh, framework that we support. For this example, I've selected a GitHub example, uh, which is publicly available uh, and which is the auto encoder. So you will find it under example, application, TensorFlow, auto encoder. And I will generate the profile with the SDK version 1.2.0. So for the purpose of the demonstration, I have already generated the report. And so I can see them inside the directory that I have specified. Once I confirm that those reports are ready, I can then uh, open them with PopVision. So on the first page here, I select open a report. And I have the option to either open the report uh, locally onto my ma machine, if that's where it's located, or onto a remote machine, which is my case. I'm connecting to it via SSH. Um, and here you can see that this is uh, the location of my report. Actually, if I go one step up, you can see here that I have a multiple report folder and in blue here are the reports that PopVision is going to be using.
The first page here provides a summary of the graph and also of the targeted hardware. So in this case here, I'm using our first generation chip, a Mark I, with the 304 megabytes of on-chip memory. You can see that I've been uh, using uh, SDK version 1.2. Uh, and you can see here the progress of other reports as they are loaded. Now, the second page here is going to be the memory report, second windows that you access on the left panel. You can see the memory uh, usage of the graph uh, and you can see a breakdown here in this list between the different type of data such as code and variables. One of the key advantage of the APU is its collection of what we call tile and each contain an independent processor with dedicated local memory. So when we analyze a graph we are not only interested in the overall memory usage but also in how the memory across tile is being used. And we want to make sure that this is balanced as much as possible across the chip. So the graph on this window shows exactly that. For each tile, um, it displays how much memory is allocated and you can see how the allocation is spread. You can also select um, a specific uh, tile to display the memory detail and break down for it rather than for the entire chip. You can also decide to select multiple tile uh, and then you can have the difference uh, of the report between the two. Now, the next window is also about memory usage. But rather than looking at the memory allocation by tile, it shows how memory consumption evolves across program step. So when analyzing the live memory use of your graph, there are two classes of allocation. Uh, first, we have allocation for items uh, always live in memory, and this is shown in uh, red here in the graph. This will be the case for code and some variables such as uh, the weight of your model and uh, yeah. And secondly, we have allocation for items that are not always live in memory. So those are shown in blue in the graph. Um, it includes, for example, short-lived intermediate result needed only during the execution of a single compute set, or they can be variable that are live longer um, activation data during uh, model training is a good example of that. They are computed during the forward pass uh, and need to be saved for the backward pass and gradient calculation. So all the frameworks that we support and our, our underlying Poplibs library are already optimized to reduce the live memory footprint. So why is it useful for you to look at this profiling? Well, there are optimization decisions that can be made at the application level. So if we take the example of the autoencoder here, um, the liveness peak that you can see here um, is actually coming from one of the fully connected layer of the model. And if I decide to increase the batch size or to add layers to the model, then the graph might go out of memory. And if that happens, I have the option, of course, to use more IPUs. But if it is clear from the liveness graph that the issue comes from the temporary memory liveness of the convolution, uh, I might decide instead to decrease an option called available memory proportion, which will try to reduce the peak of memory liveness for those convolution at the expense of more computation cycles. Another example would be to consider what I've mentioned earlier about the activation that needs to be saved for use during the backward pass. We can decide instead to recompute some of them just on time before the gradient computation to avoid keeping them in memory. And a situation like this is really where Pop Vision is going to help you to make an informed decision to optimize your model.
Besides memory usage, the number of execution cycles is also something that we want to optimize. And for this reason, PopVision also includes an execution profile. Enab enabling execution profiling grows your program a little and generates a lot of data. So if you are not interested to look at the execution cycles, you can enable the report generation with the auto report option that we saw earlier while specifically disabling execution profiling by setting the option debug.instrument to false. So the execution profile is particularly useful when profiling a model which is pipelined uh, over multiple IPUs. And this will show whether the computation is balanced across IPUs. Here I've already loaded the autoencoder execution profile and I have zoomed on some of the graph compilation. And I can see, uh, clicking on details here, I can um, see for this block here uh, that this is uh, pink. So this means that this is a computation. While uh, here in blue, I'm going to have some uh, exchange between tiles. And uh, this will go on like that across um, execution cycles. And you will also be able to see external exchange with other IPU and with the host. Now, in terms of opening the report, you also have the option to compare two reports side to side. For that, you can uh, or use uh, the option here to compare two reports. Once again, you have the option to select your report on your local machine or remotely. And uh, here I'm, I'm selecting two different profile directory and I click on compare. Now in the memory report, you will be able to see the memory details for both graphs. Uh, as well as a differential between them for each of the variable uh, and uh, code. This video has covered just a few of the many options offered by PopVision. And hopefully you got a sense of how powerful the tool can be and how easy it is to use. Uh, PopVision is already widely used amongst our engineering team here at GraphCore as well as by our customers. You will find all the required information about how to capture the report and about the visualization inside the help menu of PopVision. You can also ask questions onto our support uh, portal or directly onto Stack Overflow with the IPU tag. If you want to know more about how to program and how to optimize model on the IPU, I recommend that you check our developer portal. And in particular, I would recommend that you read our blog post called uh, Intelligent Memory for Intelligent Computing, because it gives a great insight about the innovative approach from GraphCore about memory organization, both from a hardware and a software perspective. Finally, I thank you for watching this video.